hello. In today's video we're going to talk about a great myth once again. First of all, I ask you to subscribe to the channel and leave a like, also share the video with your friends through social networks. And the most important, watch the video until the end. So let's follow up on the video. The myth surrounding lightning, these stone hatchets, is more complex and profound than the hatchets themselves. It is a universal myth, brought to America from Europeans. I've already made some videos on YouTube, quoting and showing what these legends are like involving them and everything else. I started researching these artifacts in 2005, because since I was a child I heard about these stones, which the population believed to have origins in meteorological phenomena. Since then, a lot has happened to me. Here in the municipality of Itarana located in the state of Esirito Santo, it is possible to find these artifacts dispersed in several different geographical points, some are more elaborate, while others appear to be more rustic. Suggesting that long before Europeans and indigenous tribes settled, a group of early humans from the Neolithic period already frequented the region. Precise dating in this case is complex, as the geochemical properties of the soil in this region did not favor the preservation of fossils. In addition, it is possible to observe that these artifacts suffered a lot from chemical weathering, causing corrosion and wear. Taking into account the geographic size of the municipality, it is possible that this group was from 500 to 1000 individuals, with nomadic customs between the dates of 1000 years A-C to 1000 D-C. When reading some comments on the canal's videos, I noticed that some people persist in the idea that such artifacts come from meteorological phenomena, that is, at the moment when a strong ray of atmospheric nature hits a target, which is on the surface of the ground. Segundo a principal argumenta que odiles e, que as fendas e rachaduras sao similar saos provocados por un machado o yucuna, asociando as, a estes artifatos primitivos. According to their main argument, that the crevices and cracks are similar to those caused by an axe or wedge, associating them with these primitive artifacts. Indeed, it has been proven by science, for decades now, that lightning is attracted by mountains, always looking for the shortest path between the cloud and the surface, certain types of trees with pointed leaves for physical and biochemical reasons, that is, for morphological features of the tree itself, and so on. This goes back to Benjamin Franklin's theory, the power of the tips. Lightning has voltages ranging from 100 million volts to 1 billion volts, and its current can vary from 30,000 to 200,000 amperes, and its temperature in a plasmatic state can reach 30,000 degrees Celsius, i.e., hotter than the surface of the sun. It is logical. This in a fraction of milliseconds. These physical characteristics where the lightning is in a plasmatic state, creates a strong shock wave, and the instantaneous expansion of the air, opening cracks and crevices in the targets reached. In some regions such as, beach sands and deserts, rocky fragments are formed with very curious aspects, whose name is fulgurite. However, these are formed by the melting of sand rich in silica, with the high temperatures of the rays at the moment of impact on the surface. When scanning the internet, it is easy to find texts and reports where people confuse the name fulgurite, associating it with primitive artifacts. So here in the video, we can see what this type of petrified material with glassy characteristics looks like. These are rocks with unique shapes that can earn you good money. We must still remember, two beliefs involving these artifacts that some insist come from meteorological phenomena. For some, it is considered a protective amulet against lightning, and they are placed in their homes for protection. For others, the supposed lightning stone is extremely dangerous, with the ability to invoke and attract lightning to their residence, so for this reason, when a farmer finds one, he disposes of it quickly throwing it as far away as possible, 
either into a river, waterfall, or forest. That is terrible. Because when colliding, rolling in rivers along with other pebbles and gravel, it wears out, completely changing its original shape. I have already read some comments where readers claim that the material could have been made by human activity, due to the linearity and symmetry of the sharpening, in these hatchets. As if this really were something mystical, that science could no longer explain. But these people forget the needs that our prehistoric ancestors went through, and the time it took to make these functional tools. It was also common to hear stories that such a thunderbolt stone became agitated inside the house on days of strong storms, even floating, mostly made of wood. Trepidation and vibration of the ground after heavy thunderstorms is quite common. Without electricity at night, all of this ended up causing even more fear. When reading more comments on the videos, some people insist on the lightning stone theory, due to the fact that they found the artifact inside, or close to places where trees would have supposedly been struck by lightning at some point. Although there is no relationship with the radius, the same can be explained. There are two lines of research for this, involving historians and paleontologists. One line of research says that some of these peoples had religious habits of worshipping gods, so they left stone tools around the canopy of these trees as offerings, in gratitude for the same thing that gave them shelter and food. The other line of research says, that such trees served as strategic points for the exchange of Makambo between other prehistoric peoples from further south of the country, who had possession of more advanced tools. This would explain the fact that many of these tools are made of basaltic rocks. Predominant rock formations where the Serra do Mar begins and extends throughout the south of the country. The prehistoric people who made these artifacts, is from the Neolithic period, Polished Stone Age, which comprises the years, from 4000 to 12000 BC. However, with advances in scientific discoveries, these dates may change over time, either upwards or downwards. Many of these tools were also exposed to the environment, suffering chemical and physical weathering, modifying their original color and geometric features. So scientifically speaking, these stone hatchets have nothing to do with meteorological phenomena. They are prehistoric artifacts developed in the Neolithic period, with different purposes, so there are different formats and sizes, such as, hatchets, sockets, pestles. Isopod sir facil ment comprovato como auxilio de superimas, e reagents quimicos. The mineral composition of these artifacts is usually basalt, being the most resistant, but in the absence of this, they also used granite, rocky schist, among others less known. The people of that period also realized that rocks with metallic inclusions, such as iron, guaranteed greater mass and resistance, so they made a pre-selection of rocks when making their tools. This can be easily proven with the help of super magnets and chemical reagents. And now, Recently in 2019, a group of Brazilian scientists made an unprecedented discovery in partnership with specialists from the United Kingdom, a group of Brazilians discovered that Capuchin monkeys, from the Serra de Capivara National Park, in the state of Piauí, used stone tools at least 3,000 years ago. The objects found have been used for at least 450 generations, and have different styles and functions. The discovery is revolutionary, as the team explains in an article published in Nature. Use of artifacts over time Although science has long since discovered that both humans and primates descend from the same common ancestor in the past, now we know. There is an evolutionary process in the way of life of primates, as well as in human beings, but in different degree and level. See in the video. And that concludes our video for today. Many thanks to those who followed the video until the end.